here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Checking them from the sword to be more show. Coming to strong with that podcast flow. The afternoon of 2 to 3 p.m. slot. Got the interstate 95 turnpike hot. When you tune in, they don't just entertain. They come with the message that presses the brain. Those other podcasts, they sing microscopic. Cause they're the big balls that drop the hot topics. So sword be more dumb. You just stay ready for DJ Boom Shaheem. With this episode of From the Shore to Be More, I am one of your hosts, the entertainer extraordinaire, Shaheem. I am Deborah Singletary, a.k.a. Aunt Debbie. What's up, everybody? It's yours, Julie DJ Boom, here in the building, making it do what it do every Sunday along with you. What's happening, everybody? <laughs> it's good to see everybody back. And of course, you yeah, know, yeah. we are the treacherous three of the Tri-State area. And the DMV, you heard? There you go, just know. like that. <laughs> uh, just like that. Look, y'all, I'm back in full setup mode. I got my microphone. I got my lap. I'm back in full setup mode here. For the first time in a long time, we in the building. I like it. Thanks for Come on, let's go. Yes, we, we like it when you're fully involved. The show's much better when you're fully involved. And we have a... We have a good topic, a really good topic for uh, for you guys. When, when Debbie suggested this one, I want to say that up front. Um, this is ba- going to be based on the effects of gender disparities in men. And we're going to talk all about that. We're going to get into it. Very important topic. I know you're going to enjoy it. But before we jump into all that, I've got to jump into this. Uh, last week's show was on holidays. That was a great show. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it, guys? It was. I loved it. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun. So, people out there, fans, family, if you missed the show, you can go back and watch the show on YouTube or anywhere. We can, we're available everywhere, folks. I can't stress that enough. Um, you can watch that or one of the other many episodes of From the Shore to Be More that you might have missed. And please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, subscriptions help people. Uh, I can't stress that enough. All right. Also, I want to mention. What I'm talking about going back, back and watching the other episode. I don't want to do the last word now. And not yet. <laughs> no, I, when I wanted when I wanted to mention is that people you can reach out to us on Facebook. Um Boom will be monitoring Facebook. Uh oh, so he will be putting up your comments and everything. So make sure you uh check us out on Facebook too. There we go. All right. How was everybody's week? Good. I had a, I had a great week. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. I um, I was able to sit home and get my house together. See my piano in the background, people? I was able to play it a little bit, all that. <laughs> You're so full of bull crapping. <laughs> that ain't not in his house. That ain't not in his house, y'all. <laughs> That's one of them screen cyber <laughs> ciphering what? things some young people be doing on the Zoom. Oh my what? goodness. I've Why never experienced gotta... such hate. Yeah. I've never experienced... <laughs> Why you blow my man up like that? <laughs> uh... no, but I, I was going to ask you, Boom, was how was uh, your Thanksgiving meal that you prepared? You, you made a chicken, what? Oh, meal? listen. I'm sorry. I made a chicken Alfredo lasagna. Right. Chicken Alfredo and lasagna. If, when I tell y'all, it was, man. <laughs> It was good, man. Huh? I, I wish I could wrap some up and send it to y'all. Y'all could taste it yourself, but whoo, so man, oh man, oh man! I took some to some of my people yeah. uh, at catch, 
And uh, they oh, came wow. back to me and was like, yo, you, you're just a man of many talents. I said, I'll be trying. I made it do what it did with me to be done. You know what I mean? I made a, I made a carrot. I made a carrot cake as well. That's my favorite. So I made a carrot cake as well. It's one of my favorites too. Funny you mentioned that. That is definitely one of my favorites. Boy. Ooh, people, if you don't know carrot cake, you, you missing something. You <laughs> right. missing something. I'm gonna say. I, I am definitely a, a carrot cake fan for sure. Well, Debbie, how was your Thanksgiving? Well, um, everybody knows that Aunt Debbie is not the cooking aunt, but I did. <laughs> I did roast a chicken and make some greens and potato salad for myself. And since Shaheem said that black folk don't eat pumpkin pie, I made a sweet potato pie, but I added some pumpkin into it. So oh, wow. I guess that makes me what biracial. I had pumpkin, <laughs> pumpkin and sweet potato, and baby, it was oh, good. It, oh, it sounds like it was good. It sounds. You, like you it see was how good. you got to give that that extra? I'm telling you, and when, when I tell you. Boy, oh boy, oh my goodness, it was absolutely delicious, y'all. I mean, I. Mm. You guys are making me wish I was at you guys' house. <laughs> what about you, Shaheen? What did, what did uh, you guys do? It was amazing. Um, you know, aside from all the food and, and everything, I just love being around family. Uh, for me, that's one of the most important things, especially now that, that, that we're all getting older. So it was a beautiful thing. And that being said, I just want to shout out my sister, Angela, who hosted Thanksgiving. I, I wasn't there, I, I cooked here. But I wanted to mention it because my mom, who, who doesn't make it out often, uh, made it down to Maryland, to, uh, uh, Delaware, excuse me, to her house uh, uh, to, to see her and, and had a great time. So I definitely wanted to shout them out. Um, but it was, Thanksgiving was beautiful. Absolutely. Us, always, yeah. Absolutely. My, sis, my sisters actually went up there uh, with them they did. to celebrate Thanksgiving, which was pretty cool. Um, should have grabbed one of the pictures. I, I, I should have <laughs> posted one of the pictures. That's, that's my fault. Sorry, guys. Next time. It's all good. <laughs> It's all good, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to them all. You know, what I mean, I gotta make yeah. my way at some point. I gotta definitely make my way back to Jersey and see my aunties there. Um, oh man, yes, you know, yes, 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 yes. show yes. love and you know, older. yeah, for sure. So, yeah, yeah, um, yes. I don't know. After this um, <laughs> DC, Virginia, LA trip, I'm 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 gonna have to do something to, to come up that way and and hang out at least for the weekend. Right. Right, 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 right. Well, Debbie, though, I'm not going to let you off the hook. You're supposed to be showing us some art, though. <laughs> oh, I, actually, I used to want to say hello to... Oh, bye, sweetheart. Um, That's my sweetheart. Who's oh, Debbie's got a man, <laughs> folks. <laughs> He's leaving. So um, I didn't take a photograph, but okay. this is the piece I've just completed. Um, It's oh. called Those Who Have Ears to Listen. Oh wow! And um, you know the, the 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 story was inspired by the little girl. You ever see like a, adults are in the kitchen, or in this case, they're in the back porch talking, and okay. you know, okay. there's a child that's taking in everything. Yeah, this is that yeah. child that's taking in everything, <laughs> and so um, so that's a, a wise woman in training. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna show my age here and say that uh, back in my day, the the adults used to call that ear hustling. <laughs> ear hustling. Ear hustling. When little kids be in the background listening, you know. I like that. Gosh, I might have to retitle it. Ear hustling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honey. Yeah, I'm so I'm showing my age now. <laughs> I, I didn't do a lot of ear. I didn't want to be around adults. I, I it was boring. So. The only adults I cared to be around was my dad and uh, Uncle Jamie when he came around because they came around with money. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because I, I would think that maybe maybe the, the the little girls probably do it more. I think the girls do it. I, more. I think the girls do it. Yeah, more. yeah, because right. we're receptive. You know, we have a receptive okay. peer, spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I can many men are out times. going, going, do, do, boys going, do, do, do. Right. Um, that's what it means to be a positive sign, masculine, and the feminine power is receptive and listening and receiving. There you have it, folks. You're learning, you're learning something every day when you watch this show. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let yeah. Me tell you. Yeah. But I, men I, could, yeah. could stand to do more of the feminine um i you know value 
and and women could maybe stand and do more of the masculine because we both have masculine and female within. So we really need to learn to balance both. Thank you, Terry, for that compliment. By the way, um, I'm gonna need a picture. Um, I definitely want a picture. I have more than enough walls in here to hang pictures up. So I definitely need an Aunt Debbie picture uh, to hang up in, in my in my new home. So there you go. There you go. Hey, drive by and pick one out. <laughs> oh my goodness, I gotta drive. All right, just somebody, well, just if you want to take it frame, you want me to? I can send you a print, and you could frame it yourself. How's that? It's always an option. Uh, you know, yeah, that that'll work. I listen, New York. You know, I was just there. I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> I don't. I am not a fan. You know, I'll come there and work if I have to, but I don't like it. I, it took me twenty minutes to literally go around the corner. Like, mm. what in the? <laughs> how do you live in this place? I, twenty minutes to circle the block. Well, on Debbie, on Debbie, Public on transportation. Debbie. That's how I do it. Public <laughs> transportation. And public transportation. I don't live there. I got, I got things I got to do. I got to be driving. There you go. Well, well come to my Saturday house, Saturday. leave off your car, and take Uber. Oh no, Uber has oh, to yeah. drive. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Well, sorry, <laughs> baby, I can't help you. As long as I'm not driving, I don't care. I just want to keep the ball rolling real fast and just mention uh, football. it is football Sunday, folks. So shout out to all the football teams playing today. I will shout out my uh, New York bums. No, nope, New York Giants, excuse me, <laughs> who are playing the Patriots today. Hoping we get a victory. We ain't playing for much. But what we are playing for, and people say they should throw the games, is that first round draft pick. But well, whatever. <laughs> shout out to the New York Giants. <laughs> shout out to the Giants. Y'all y'all, y'all see my shirt. You know what I mean? Y'all see my there shirt. My my team was winners on Thanksgiving Day. So they did win that game. And Absolutely. I just knew they were gonna lose that game. They Absolutely. pulled that game off. So shout out to yeah, definitely you shout out to stop, them. They better stop playing with them. They better stop <laughs> playing with Jordan Love. They they you know they talked about him real bad because Aaron Rodgers is not there. But mm. Aaron Rodgers, if you look back at it, they don't know this, but he had the same stats that Jordan Love had when he took over for Brett Favre. And now look how great he is. So stop playing with that wow. boy. Wow. He, he here to stay for sure. Wow. <laughs> all right. Well, shout out to the, to the Green Bay Packers. And to everybody, all the football fans out there, if you want to shout out your team, you can. Just comment, put in the comments and hit us up on Facebook and we'll shout your team out. Anybody but the Cowboys and the Eagles. They're <laughs> off the list. <laughs> that's off limits. That's that's too far. But that any other right. team you want to shout out? <laughs> any other no, team? No, 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 no. We, I ain't shouting out no Patriots. I ain't shouting out no Steelers. I ain't shouting out none of them. That ain't right, y'all. Ain't right. <laughs> Shame on you if you like them teams. That's your problem. That's, don't make it out. No, I'm not doing it. What that. about the Lakers? That's basketball. That's my squad. That, that, that's that's basketball, that's but that's basketball, my squad right, right oh. there. We're going to keep the ball rolling, folks. That's all right. Now, if it's your birthday, if it's your birthday, if it's your birthday, shout get out, on up. Mm, shout, mm, out, mm. shout out to everybody out there celebrating their birthday today or in the past week or in the upcoming week. We love to celebrate your birthday with you because we appreciate it. And I'm sure just like we do, you having another year on this planet. So shout out to all the birthday people. You guys got anybody? If it's your birthday, get on up. Yeah, I love it. So my, um, my nephew, uh, Ralph. I think he had a birthday, or was it my grand, or was it his son, RJ, Ralph Jr., had a birthday um, that was just recently celebrated. My brother's birthday was on Thanksgiving Day. We shouted him out last week, but hey, uh, twice. I think Sam, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. How about you, Boom? Um... I, I just have a homegirl. Obviously, Ralph is related to me too. So shout out to yeah. each, whichever one it was, Ralph or Ralph Jr. 
And I got a homegirl whose birthday was the day after Thanksgiving. So shout out to her. Happy birthday to her, Miss Brianna Richardson. Um, we got a, We had a couple celebrities in the month of November um, that we didn't <clears throat> mention happy birthday to. So I'm going to try to get through it real fast, as many as I can. Eve celebrated a birthday this month. Tracy Morgan celebrated a birthday this month. Corey Hardrick celebrated a birthday this month. Mr. Scarface himself celebrated a a birthday. Cisco celebrated a birthday this month. SZA celebrated a birthday. A whole lot of people celebrated a birthday in the month. And Tandy Newton, one of my favorite actresses, celebrated a, a birthday this month as well. So, um, you know, and Odell Beckham Jr.'s birthday was earlier and on in the you month. Know, I but, you know. but yeah. I want to shout out. I got some personal people I want to shout out. Though. <clears throat> um, um, real, real fast. Of course, I mentioned uh, my nephew's birthdays uh, last week, which just passed, but. I, I'm so proud of them boys. I'm just gonna mention them again. Uh, Baru and Jalen, uh, happy birthday to you guys, uh, uh, for sure. But most important for me, most important uh, for me is, it is my father's 75th birthday. I know that's right, Uncle Jay. Wow, he's handsome. That's so good. <laughs> 75 years. I know that's right. And, and of course, that's so special to me and my family. And I, I just want to say uh, happy birthday to my dad. As you can see him smiling in the picture. He has a smile much like mine, nice and bright. And uh, of course, you see the picture over there uh, with me and my, my dad as when, when I was a kid. Yes, I'm a light and bright one, <laughs> if you haven't figured it out. And, and and that's my brother, my older brother, Gerald. I, I thought you was the one with the hat on. In the picture. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, right? But no, I'm, I'm the light and bright one. Um, My father means the world to me. I mean, we Like every father's son, we have bump heads in, in, in the past, and you have those moments. But I can't express to you uh, uh, enough how much my father means to me. Uh, growing up, he was my hero. Um, So again... Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Uncle Jay, for sure. That's Happy most, birthday, Jay. Most important <laughs> uh, to me. But uh, back to celebrities. Uh, speaking of celebrities, today, on this very day, um, we have some celebrities that I know everybody recognizes, um, and so I definitely want to shout them out. First, I'm going to do this one, uh, DJ Khaled. Uh, today is his birthday, so I want to shout out. Everybody knows Khaled. DJ Khaled, if you ever been listened to the radio, I'm sure. Hey, yo, check this out. It's DJ Khaled. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Happy birthday to DJ Khaled. But uh, I also want to say this one, and I'm sure uh, even on, on Debbie will really appreciate this one. It's, it's Tina Turner. All right now. It's yes. <laughs> Yes. Right, all right, all right. Yes. The icon herself. Now, I didn't even go into how old she is. I No need. She's an older person. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> and, but we're glad she's still around. So, happy birthday. No, she's not. She's not. She's, she's, oh, she's not. That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, but I want to say happy birthday uh, to, to, to Tina Turner uh, out of respect and, of course, out of love for her music. Uh, so, happy Absolutely. birthday. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Wild Thank you. woman, Thank you. Tina. Yeah. Couple of more celebrities. Your boy Don Cheadle celebrates a birthday on the 29th. We won't be on the we won't be on the air to celebrate it. So no. John Cheadle, the game on the 29th. Mr. Chadwick Bond Bosman, known as the Black Panther to everybody. His birthday is the 29th. Russell Wilson's birthday is the 29th. Michael Blackston, the comedian, his birthday is the 28th. Oh, I love that guy. I love uh that guy. Trey Songs is the 28th. Robin Givens' birthday is tomorrow. Is today the 27th? Today is the 26th. Tomorrow's the 27th. Robin Givens celebrates a birthday, and Mr. Jaleel White, a.k.a. Steve Urkel, celebrates a birthday tomorrow. So shout out to the Sages in the building. Any That's birthdays right. on Facebook? I'm sure there are. Let's see. I'm writing it right now. Facebook birthdays. If it's your birthday, get on up. Mm -mm, right, say it. Right, right. If it's your birthday, get on up. I mean, the ones on who are ringing in saying it's my birthday. Not, don't go to that long list. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't go through a long list anyway. It's not a really a long list. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's about five people's birthdays today, and you don't won't know any of them, so it's no point of saying it. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. 
that's okay. Well, happy birthday to everybody no, celebrating the birthday no, today. No. Old one that's passed, old one that's coming up. Um, happy birthday <clears throat> to, to, to everybody. It was your birthday, get on up. I'm loving that song. I swear, I was, I yeah, was singing that yeah, all day, yeah. every day. I be wanting to let it ride, but I be trying to keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and, right. and keeping it moving, I want to just go through this, you know? I, I guess right now we should start the show. Mm, mm, mm. Got TV and movie. I got one. Oh, good, good. I, I <laughs> Maxine's baby, the Tyler Perry story. Oh man, my wife started very, watching a little bit. Very moving and enlightening. Yes, yes. I, I, good. That's a good I, one, on Debbie. I heard one. about that. Um, my sister uh, was recommended to watch that, you know, because she's a playwright, and uh, somebody had suggested for her to watch, and she had mentioned it to me. So um, I might watch it. I don't know. Yeah, it's on Prime, I believe. Mm hmm. My wife started watching a little bit of it, and I will. I will say it. It, it was well done. It was mm -hmm. well done. Um, Tyler's story is amazing, people. But I don't think I can tell everybody that. I think most of us know at least mm -hmm. some of his story. Um, but uh, when you when you hear it and you see him talk about it and everything, it's really touching. I, I would tell anybody to go back and definitely check that out. Well, I, would... so I liked about it was they handled the haters very well. They didn't just mm. say, oh, what a great man I, am I. They also talked about the people, or you heard from people who thought right. he was a buffoonery or his characters right. were buffoons and right. and they, they didn't like a black man essentially in drag. Some people called him Tranny Perry, you know, so I like that they also yes. talked about, you heard from people who didn't like what he does as well as no. the overwhelming majority um who do right right and, which i which i thought was a little crazy because men dressing up and as women didn't start with tyler perry folks not at all uh for, for me in my era i remember most famously flip wilson absolutely uh, uh, and, 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 and he yeah, yeah. Am you old shaheem you old yeah right, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. But, but just what? like but just like wine, I get better with time. Better believe it. Well, that is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was, I was going to say the same thing, and um, you know, it transitioned to other folks doing it, like Martin Lawrence, like Jamie Foxx, um, you know, dressing up in in women's yeah. clothes. And, and yeah. So I didn't time. understand the hate. <clears throat> People got to have something to talk about. It seems from what like I, from what I was told, if you're not, if they're not talking about you. You ain't you ain't relevant, so you know what I mean. Um, yes, sir. So I take I take all of that on that on that on those shoulders as well, because mm -hmm. people always got something to say about DJ Boom, <laughs> good, bad, or indifferent. Always got something to say. So I so well, understand that all too well. Well, I'm so more well happy for Tyler's success, and yes, go see the uh, the, the movie uh, documentary Maxine's Baby. You, you, people, I think you're gonna love it. Um, his, if you're not his, watching us. First here's, <laughs> right here's another cliffhanger it'll leave you on the edge of your seats i watched this movie yesterday it's called don't okay. let go and it's okay. on uh i believe it's on peacock uh if you have peacock you subscribe to peacock uh it's called don't let go it's it's a it's a it's a thriller type drama sort of thing um it was pretty good it, it had me on edge. i was like okay this is if if a movie gets you to the point to the point where you're getting frustrated, you don't want to watch it no more. That means it's a good movie because like now you, you're making me mad. It's it's grabbing me now, you know. So um, I think that's that would be a good one to check out. You got a a, a Saturday or Sunday to yourself. It's called. Is the like, ending oh. decent? Because I can't take it when they when they let me go and they drop me and I'm all <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's actually pretty good. Okay, I'm telling you, it had me talking to the TVs. What the heck? Come on, it's, you know what I mean when it when it grabs you like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, I wanted to extend my I had such a long list of holiday movies. I extended it, so I hope that's okay. And everybody's getting into the holiday spirits now too, so I'm gonna shout that out anyway. Uh, Thanksgiving is over. Everybody's racing. I saw people 
getting their trees already. Already. I've seen cars running down the road with, with their trees on their roofs already. And folks, uh, please, uh, you never commented on whether you like real trees or fake trees. Please comment on that. But I kept the holiday thing going. And so here's a couple of my more of my favorite holiday movies. And I hope that's okay. I'm going to start. And boom, you mentioned this one. But, oh, man, I had Oh, boy. <laughs> a Charlie Brown Christmas. A char This one... <laughs> That one, come on, people. That's got to be uh, definitely on your uh, on everybody's top ten list. It's, it's just got to be. And I'm gonna run through them fast, folks, to keep it moving. Um, this is another one, and my wife really loved this one, and so she demanded that I put this one up. Uh, this Christmas, uh, people, it was pretty good. It was pretty good, and um, it has uh, uh, Chris Brown in it. Uh, Idris Elba uh, for the, for people. Uh, and I think you're really gonna love that one. But also this one too for me. Uh. A Christmas yeah. Story with Ralphie. That's a classic right there. That is a classic. <laughs> uh, when my man got stuck to the pole because he licked it. Oh, right. man. <laughs> right there. That's one of the pictures right up there. Absolutely. And, that's and, a and, classic right there. I thought so. And it, I think that should be on people's top 10 list, too. But also, uh, I wanted to just mention this one real fast because I saw this and I thought it was great. And boom, I'm sure you can appreciate this. Uh, Blue Beetle. Um, I, I I just saw this yesterday. I had a lot of fun watching it with my son. So, family, if you're sitting around uh, and you're not watching us, you might want to just check out Blue Beetle today. That's the one I'm waiting that's to on see. Max, that's, by the way. that's the one I haven't seen yet. Okay, I'll check that out today then. It's it's on Max, uh, people, and 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 that is my monthly TV. And oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all talk yeah. about classic, and y'all okay. show me that little boy. That ain't no classic. That's recent. Here's classic. Okay. Oh, um, uh, what is it called? A Wonderful Life? It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. Uh, that's it it's like, no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That, that's a pretty good one, too. That was a good movie. And so Never was seen uh, it. Miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> oh, my God. What is wrong with y'all? Never seen Y'all be old and y'all young. I mean, come on. No, you know what? I'm going to say, say no, 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 I saw that. I saw that. Okay. Yeah, I saw them both. Miracle and a Christmas Street. Carol. A Christmas Carol is very nice. There's one with um, um, Picard on Star Trek. Is is not Picard, but that character <laughs> right. very good. All right, I'm done. Whatever. That's a long list of movies that you can go check out. Um, um, during uh, this Sunday when you're not watching us, folks. So there you have it. In enjoy. All right, let's keep it moving. Just like I do every week, I want to remind people that you can uh, contact the show. We, we encourage you to please contact the show. Reach out to us, whether you want to be part of one of the games that we play or you want to be, uh, you have something to say about Must See TV or whatever you want to do. You can contact us. Please contact us at our Instagram is at from the shore to be more. Our Twitter is at two underscore be more. Our email is from the shore to be more at gmail.com. Or you can call the show at 732-440-9314. If we do not answer, please leave a message and someone will return the call. Also, I have to remind people about donations. Um, People, we need your donations not to keep the show going, but to keep the show growing. Um, Very important Um, that we get your support. And so you can help us by sending uh, donations to Cash App, Money Sign from the Shore Be More, or to PayPal, paypal.me slash from the Shore to Be More. Now, now it's time to get into this very, very, very important topic. That being said, I want to show a video, the video that on Debbie you sent to us that for me sparked the whole thing. Is that all right? Go for it, man. <laughs> I don't know, Boom, if, if you had a chance to check it out, but check it out. We, we're going to have a serious conversation about this, but uh, here we go, folks. Find, and sometimes into despair, Lee Cowan takes a closer look. At the University of Vermont not too long ago, it was move-in day for the class of 2027. This is from my hometown. About a thousand incoming freshmen were meeting their roommates, finding their dorm rooms, and just generally getting settled on campus. 592 is that way. Now you'd be forgiven if at first glance you thought that this was an all women's college. Well, 62% of this year's class are women. Josie, what's your roommate's name? And that's a gender gap that has earned Burlington, Vermont a nickname, Girlington. 
you see six or seven women for every three or four men. Yeah. As UVM's vice provost for enrollment, Jay Jacobs' job is all about student diversity. And these days, the male-female divide is now part of that equation. Sure, I thought about racial and ethnic diversity. Right. Sure, at a public flagship in the state of Vermont, I've thought about geographic diversity, never gender diversity like that. But that's where we are. That's where we are. UVM, though, is hardly an outlier. Nationwide, women do make up almost 60% of college undergraduates. In 1972, when Title IX was passed to help improve gender equality on campus, men were 13 percentage points more likely to get an undergraduate degree than women. Today, though, it's women who are 15 percentage points more likely to get a degree than men. So we have a bigger gender gap today than we did when we passed laws to help women and girls. It's just flipped. Richard Reeves is a Brookings Institution senior fellow, and he says, shockingly, no one has really been able to explain why so many men are so absent in higher education. What is known is the gender disparity starts pretty early, as early as kindergarten, where girls are just generally the stronger sex in academics. If you look at high school GPA and those who are getting the best uh, grades in high school, two-thirds of them are girls. Those with the lowest grades, two-thirds of them are boys. It's been theorized that girls and women are just really fulfilling their destiny, that once the limitations on their achievements were lifted, they soared. Reeves, though, is so worried that he's launched the American Institute for Boys and Men because he fears that things have changed so fast, it's left many boys and men struggling to catch up, not just in the classroom, but at work and at home, too. What does it mean to be a successful man today? That was a question that was pretty easy to answer a generation or two ago. But actually, what is the answer today? And a lot of these guys just don't know. In short, he says, millions of boys and men don't understand how or where they fit anymore. And the reaction is to generally disconnect. Men's participation in the labor market, for example, has dropped more than seven percentage points just in the last 50 years. 21% of men report binge drinking. That's almost double the rate of women. And men account for nearly 80% of suicide deaths. That's four times the rate for women. The two most commonly used words by suicidal men to describe themselves were useless and worthless. But even to suggest there's some kind of male crisis these days is pretty perilous. Merely raising it will cause people to eye roll and say, really, <laughs> 10,000 years of patriarchy, now you're worried? After all, women still earn only about 80 cents for every dollar earned by a man. Only a fraction of CEOs in the Fortune 500 are women. And they make up just a quarter of the members of Congress. And so far, no U.S. presidents. Numbers that leave UVM students Sarah Wood and Maxine Flordeliza pretty skeptical that men are just treading water. And I think it's really interesting that there is kind of like a big fuss about, like, not a fuss, but it's, it's, it's a conversation that people are having. But I don't think it's necessarily a problem. I think that... Just the fact that the playing field has been a little bit more evened out shouldn't be the reason as to why men don't really know where they fit. Sure. Do we need to do more to encourage more women into politics and into, in, into boardrooms? Yes. But meanwhile, can I not see that one group is struggling here and another group is struggling there? And if I can't do that, we're in really deep trouble. And those in the most trouble, he says, are working class and African-American boys and men. Before, it used to be you graduated high school, goodbye, you're on your own. A lot of people said, hey, you're out of my house, yep. or it's time for you to go. But we're understanding now that those supports need to continue. Principal Hill, hey, how are you? I'm wonderful. Good, you to Good to see you. Vaughn Washington is with the Kalamazoo Promise in Michigan. It's a program that offers high school graduates in Kalamazoo scholarships covering up to the entire cost of in-state college tuition. The impact? Well, the number of Kalamazoo women getting a college degree did increase by about 45 percent. But the number of Kalamazoo men getting college degrees didn't budge. We're working with them, we're talking to them, we're trying to find out what is it that even with this opportunity, you have some of the same challenges as someone in another community that doesn't have this opportunity. One solution, though, that does seem to be working is making sure that those men who are struggling have a place to freely admit they're struggling. 
do he have a cell number you can give me? Staffers with the Promise are tracking down those men still eligible for the scholarship, finding out why they never used it, and helping them get what they need to finally do it. Like Daniel Joffrey. I just started wandering around in life and doing random jobs, getting tired of random jobs. and We welcome you here to the Kalamazoo Promise. Now I'm here. <laughs> need help up here? He joined with dozens of other men at what the Promise was calling the Males of Promise event. It's important that you put something positive out here on your name and on your future. It was as much straight talk as it was straight out party. Dennis Martin graduated high school six years ago. He says had the promise not tracked him down, he might not have realized that he was indeed ready for something more. I feel like now I have the discipline to be in a five-year program or four-year program, but as a kid, I feel like I was still bouncing off the walls and my mind didn't know what exactly is out there. Back at UVM, administrators have changed their marketing and communication strategies to reach out to men, especially those who might not think they want to go to college at all. The college is also hiring a diversity coordinator to focus specifically on helping men. The world was built for people like you and me to succeed. All right. People, everybody see the video. I'm sure everybody has an opinion on it. Um, I, I want to, I want this is, this is my take on it. This is something I think I've noticed happening for a while now. Um, and, and I'm, I'm, I see the despair sometimes in, in the young men's days. I was thinking in the clip that he even mentioned that some of the top things that the emotions that they're feeling are a, a sense of uselessness or a sense of not being able to find their place or fit in. Um, I, I'm not so sure where it all is coming from. Obviously, women are starting to surge, and I'm not knocking that. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Um, but I think because the world was shaped in a way where men dominated for so long that our young men are now finding it hard to find a place when women seem to be taking up the space out there. What do you guys think? Um, just the way that you just phrased what you just said. <laughs> I don't it, think it's a, I don't think it's a, um, taking up space this okay in, in this in this day and in, in, in age and environment i've noticed uh the way that boys are being raised compared to back when we were being raised they're not raised with the idea of wanting more they they're they're given everything so to, to want more you gotta know that there is more you know what i mean so for us, for, for me personally coming up, school was very important. Although I never agreed with school, school was very important in my household. It was, you know, you needed it in order to achieve this or get that or whatever the case may be. Where now the, the parents are just giving the kids everything. So they don't, they're giving them even so much so as answers to your homework. They're, they're giving them the answer. They're not letting them figure it out. So now you're in an environment of, I'm now 17 or 18 or 19 years old. I grew up being handed everything. What do I need to figure out? You know, my mother needs to figure it out or my dad needs to figure it out for me because that's what they've been doing my entire life. You, you know what I mean? And um, yeah. I think that's where the disparages come in. And then, of course, media has an influence where, where now men are feeling uh, insecure about women making more money than them, about women doing more than them. And the women are just doing what they need to do out of necessity because they're not going to sit back and wait for nobody to take care of them or to make sure they get this or make sure they get that. They're just doing it now. So the, the things have changed. And then in raising of, of, of children, you know what I mean? We're talking between 16 and 20 as far as going to college those parents were young parents you know I me mean, having kids and i'm telling you i see it all the time they give them everything they give it okay to them. but i don't think i agree with that 
Well, but what's your, what's, what's your take on Debbie, first of all? I, I'm listening to y'all. You go say <laughs> your... You know, I think that the natural need to dominate females makes it tough to find a space when, when they are becoming more dominant. Whoa! And, and so young men who, who of course, aren't in, aren't as in tune with their emotions and, and, and things like an older person might be, find it hard to deal with. In other words, um, I can remember seeing a clip of the movie where a, a man said this about a racist. A racist killed his neighbor who was a black man. He killed his, his donkey. Um, and his son said to him, Dad, well, why did you kill so-and-so's donkey? And the white man said to his son, he said, if you ain't better than a nigger, then who are you better? Uh, and so I think in a sense, a feeling of if you're not better than a girl, what Come, comes comes to play in it, in it all? Um, again, we, we, we have a society that's built up with the, with the focus being on men. And that's changing. That that tide has changed a little bit. I'm not saying that women are going to dominate men, but their place ha has changed a, a bit. They're, they're not standing behind us no more. That's for sure. They're not standing behind us no more. And I think for young men, this can be hard to deal with. If it, you're not better than a woman, then what? Then what? You're supposed to be dominant. At least that's what we're taught. Maybe that's partly due to how we're raised, like you mentioned. These um, kids are not being taught to be dominant at all. I'm, I'm mm, trying to tell you. We're not talking I about disagree. back when I was young. They're not. They're not. I don't care what I you disagree. disagree with. I They're disagree. They're not. Talk. Take it from a person who was dating or, or was, was married, and I'm watching how they deal with their sons, and they're not when you say teaching they, them, who are you saying? Women, parents, okay. they're not to get they're not well, so parents their in boys. general? That's all of them. I they're not, disagree. they're giving what you mean you disagree, you're not in it. I can disagree. See it. You're not I in disagree. it. I disagree 100 percent well, 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 that's perfectly fine because the way you're talking no, is glad, very chauvinistic. No, make, make the way point. you're talking is very chauvinistic. I don't want to dominate no woman. I don't want nobody walking behind me. I want you walking next to me. I don't give a damn if you walk slightly in front of me. I don't care about none of that. They're not giving these boys the ingredients that they need to want to do it. I told when I was working okay. at a job, I was working a job uh, for the holiday, making extra money. I told the, the supervisor, you're using 30 year old work practices on children of today that are not the same as we were <laughs> when we we worked because we mm. wanted to work. They wow. work. We work because we wanted to work. They don't work because they want. They work because they have to. Because if they're not, if their parents are not going to give it to them, oh man, I got to go get a job now. So their attitude is not going to be the same. I see this day in and day out. Day yeah. in and day out, I see it. Their I, I, attitude I is say, not going to be the same. For me, when, when we're talking about parenting, I think for, for the most part, a lot of fathers, because you said parenting, you didn't, you, you, in general, fathers oh, teach boy. Their, their boys to be. They don't. They don't. They, to be, well, that's they your don't. opinion. And that, that's your opinion. That's fine. Mine is different. But they do teach their, their boys to they be don't. men. Now, <laughs> now, that being show, said, and again. Show, show me one that does it. And, today. and again, me. What person, listen, what man listen, does not teach listen, his son you go. So you're to be still a man talking about, and prepare you, still, him see, and prepare him I for knew the what you were talking about. There. That's why I wanted you to say it. I'm not talking about your son who is, how old is your son? Wait, hold on. The, you said parenting in general. How old is your son? My son is a young man, but you how said old parenting is he? in general. Okay, how old is your son? My son is 19. Exactly. Okay. and so You are doing talking. that. You are doing that. Yeah, but you can't say the that all parents are doing They're it. not doing it. I promise oh, see, you, they're now you not generalize doing it. And that's, that's what I'm, that's what I'm having a problem with. They are not doing it. That's not true. That's okay. not true. A lot of men okay. are out there trying to do what, what they so can. You think, to so bring you their think boys up thing is to deal with this world out here wanting and to be dominate men. somebody? You think it's based upon wanting to be dominated by well, somebody? in the natural order, what? the way things have been. That the is not a natural order. Let me finish. The way things have been. And the way the world is constructed, or is a the focus is on men, and that's because why the world, the world is, is fucked up now. Men. That's why it's fucked well, up right people, now. Because you can say of that, that and people may agree, people because may disagree. Of that but nonetheless, it is up. what it is. 
And so because now that that's changing, that's them that's changing, the young men are finding it hard. To, and I wish I would have played the rest of that video because they went on to, to even describe in detail uh, the changes that they're seeing in the young men, how they're withdrawn uh, uh, because they can't seem to find their ground or their footing out here in the world because, because women are surging. And there's, there's no denying that. There's no denying that. You saw it in the, in the video, you know? But the idea that parents aren't, aren't, aren't making, uh, raising their boys to be men or something they're is not. ridiculous. They're not. Okay, well, that's your opinion. I just so happen to disagree with that. <laughs> it's not. Uh, I not. think that I think that a lot of men are doing what they can to prepare their boys out here, but the world is different. It is cha- It is changing. And so may- I would say this, maybe as older men, it's a little more difficult to teach the younger men to survive in a different environment in like today's world is. That could be also uh, a problem, but that's something we need to talk about. It is a different environment out here, but uh, we shouldn't feel like we're in competition with the women. We should be able to go on about your life and and progress or however the way you want to without feeling like you're in competition. Just because Sally might be doing a little better than you shouldn't be a threat to you. I think that should be the focus and something that we should teach our, our boys growing up. That shouldn't be a threat to you at all. Um, women in different stages or girls uh, in different stages of their life are just stronger than boys in certain areas. And that was pointed out in the video, like academics. Uh, when we're young boys, we're a little stupid. Nah, I don't want to say stupid. That's not the point. We're a little, now nah, we're not as focused. Let me say that. As maybe the young girls are. Uh, and I think that's a natural thing. Girls have to plan for families. It's a whole different way. Well, of, well you know, there's, there's one way in which um, the dominant culture um, layers that into education. And that is the dominant culture. Education is designed to dominate children. Okay. And so the, how do you dominate children? You have them all sit down and you be quiet. Um, mm. And that might break, work for the girls, but it doesn't work for the boys because they have, um, what is, I don't know whether it's testosterone or whatever it is in developed boys just have more um energy Energy. and they can't sit still and so um our boys because they're not quote unquote especially black boys because they're not quote unquote well behaved they're not understood they're not really seen and because they are they need to run around so then their their diagnosis having adhd and Mm -hmm. and drugs and they're given drugs and and they're labeled as as bad when all they are is naturally energetic and the education system needs to be modified um, for them. And so in certain points of, of, of our development, women are just stronger at certain things at certain ages and we get stronger with mature. certain things. Mature, more mature. Yeah. More, it's, it's, yeah, we're, right. we're more mature. Right. Women are more mature, yeah. And, and I that's just, that's just the natural order of things. Women have to plan for families, raising kids, babies, things like that. And that's, that's why I think they're more strong on, on, on certain things like... Uh, uh, well, uh, I don't know, because that being... implies that men don't have to raise children. You you, you know, so yeah. men have to raise children the same, you know, these days they need the same qualities to raise children. They yes, need to I, know I, I how... Necessity, but that natural uh, feeling like that... that they well, naturally we have babies. Right. Um, but and, and and the world has changed. There was a time when men needed to go out and hunt and shoot the the, right. the deer, the deer and the bears. And now you can go to the supermarket to get your um, meat if that's what you eat. And right. so we, so men now have a different role. And and so you know the culture has to really redefine itself. When even when you talked about. Mm. Um, the, you know, men at one point being very dominating, um, being dominating is to me a sign of depression. A healthy human being doesn't have to dominate. And and when we look at the white man um, coming over and, um, you know, killing off all the buffalo and stealing people's lands and tricking the Native Americans, um, people with healthy self-esteem don't have to kill off anything. It's the bullies who have low self-esteem that have to be dominated. 
So we, you know, this culture is built on domination, which I think is a sign of low self-esteem, which I liken to not having faith in a supreme, you know, in, 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 in the universe. Like they feel they have to do more. They have to attack. They have mm. to kill. They have to dominate. And that, right. I think, is that men may have been um, depressed for a long time, culturally speaking, and people didn't know it because they go rah, 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 and they look like they're handling it. Mm. And that's, that's, that is, that's an interesting point. That is an interesting point. Um, what I meant when I said about the girls having that natural feeling, uh, that, that natural sense of, of uh, uh, family and nurturing is is uh, they're born with that sense. Of course, men have to raise families in today's world. That's not a necessity. Uh, but I think, like in if you go to most family courts, when w what you see is that the women end up with the children more than the men. Um, the judge will look more to the mother. I guess is what I'm saying. Not all the time, but will consider the mother first when granting custody of, uh, of kids. Uh, you know, they, they 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 learn this from their mothers growing up and everything. Uh, but not, that's the end of here. The point I'm trying to make is that yes, women are, are stronger in certain things at certain ages, and as we get older, we get stronger at certain things at certain ages. But we will, I guess, because the world society is built in 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 this way. Uh, there was always a feeling that men were always dominant over women. I think our history shows that. And I don't mean history of black people. I mean, the history of the world shows that. Uh, women have always been in the background. Um, and of course, now that that's changing. Yeah, I think- And there's a lot of power in the background. I wouldn't put, mm. play women cheap just because no, we've I'm been in the background. Because I'll say the background is really what supports the foreground. You can't have a foreground without the background. And as a woman, I wouldn't expect you to say anything else. <laughs> but yeah, you're 100. Yeah, you 100. No, you you, you you are right. You are right. Um, even though some men might not, I think most men would agree that women are the backbones of of, of the family and, and 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 everything. I think that's one reason why the call is out there now for for a woman president because they, the feeling is that maybe a woman could lead the country better. Um, but there 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 you have it. But Again, in a society where, where men have dominated for so long, and now we're more on an even playing field, uh, the young boys are just, I guess, struggling to find their place. And in, in the film, in the video, it'll show you how they're withdrawing, like I said, um, uh, by uh, employment. Uh, their employment rates are dropping while women's are, are going up. Uh, the, the, uh, the detachment into video games in that world uh, uh, it comes into play too, and, and you speak about it in the video. The video was so long, so I don't want to play the whole thing. But um, and and you can see it. You can see it. I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you how many times I I, I see uh, young men who 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 much rather be home in their rooms playing video games than at a social event. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh the, 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 this this need to detach from the world. Is that, and of course, video games make it easier. Now you got a virtual reality, the whole world that you can live in, buy homes and everything. It's ridiculous. That's a whole other subject. But yeah, yeah, I think young men are, are, are finding it hard to fit in uh, today. I'm not saying blaming it all on women, of course. It's not all mm. women's fault. No. I, mm -hmm. I, I, a lot of do has to be with men. Maybe we just don't know how to raise our boys in today's society. <laughs> And si similar to what Boom was saying, old old ways just don't work in today's world. Maybe. maybe like yeah, I thought that was a good point that the that the supervisor was using thirty year old practices in order to supervise it's, it's people work. today. I thought that was a really um good point. But when they let me um, go, she mm -hmm. said, "Oh, I I heard you said I don't know what I'm doing at my job." And I said, "I never said that. I might have called you a moron, but I never said you didn't know what you were doing." You know what I mean? That's, that's what I did. I called up Mora. I said, "You're." It's like well, I don't understand how you don't see thirty years ago compared to now. <laughs> it's like what these kids are so different now. Yeah, Shaheem, you and Terry might raise your child to be the next president, 
Everybody ain't doing that. And I promise you they're not. So you don't have to agree with me. I really don't care. Everybody no, ain't doing the point that. I'm trying to make is that and, not and you know what? That's we pretty really... poor brush to use. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. You know, there, there are a lot of people out there that are like me and, Listen, and my wife. They're, they're yeah, but look at the age. What I said, mm. the young people having kids are not teaching their kids to want anything. They're giving them everything. Is what I said. Yeah, You're not a young person. You. Terry is not a young person. So yeah, it's gonna be different. If I had a child right now, at 49, yeah, it'll be different. My child wouldn't. I'm not gonna give them everything but they're giving them everything. If somebody had a child at 15, they're now 30 and their child is 15. Guess what they can go? They can go to college and they're not giving them, they're not feeding them the, what they need. They're just giving them everything. I see it. I see it day in and day out. They, they're giving them the answers. They're giving them the this. They give, I said, you are weakening your children. You okay, think but, you're strengthening them or giving them something more than what you had when you when because you didn't have it? No, you're okay, hurting them. That 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 for me doesn't explain this feeling of uh, of this this lost feeling that our young men are feeling. Now, when you say that they're giving everything uh, that these young uh, parents are are giving their kids everything, that that might be true. But they're giving the girls the same kind of love and attention that they're giving the boys. I don't think they're saying. Well, let's give the boys everything and, and and hold back on the girls. They're giving the girls the same kind of love, so they're growing up in the same kind of house. You know, why why do, why do the boys feel like the, uh, feel the threat uh, 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 from girls, even if it's not said, even if it's not said out loud? Uh, it's to the point where okay, if I can't be dominant over Susie in the, in a particular thing, I'm just not going to bother. You know what you you know what I mean? That, that, could be, could be. Some people say that, feel that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And so the fact that 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 young parents and they and they very well maybe giving them everything, uh, but like I said, uh, if they're giving the boys that kind of love and attention, I'm sure they're giving the girls the same kind of love and attention. You know, it just came up for me that the so-called lost boys may actually be creating a different way. Okay. Um, you know, they may be the ones that say, hey, I, my version of being successful is not the version that society says mm, makes a man successful. Important. They might be the ones who are going to um, learn to, um, you know, have compassion or have empathy because, the you know, the successful men in our culture are, are, are warmongers. Um, mm. I don't mean categorically, I mean in government. Excuse me, everybody. I don't I know, mean, I know what you mean. <laughs> you know, but you know, who who sent those, who, who sent the Hamas people to attack Israel? Who sent the Israels to attack Hamas? I bet you there weren't women in there, though there may have been women, para, you know, para, um, parroting men because sometimes you put women in leadership and they just copy what the men do in leadership mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know we we really need different cultural values and this value of going to war and killing people having people killed i'm like and the successful men are doing that so mm -hmm. and i think we also need to look a little more deeply at what we call success Good point. Good point. I think they're we've spoken point. about that on on several different shows as far as what success mm -hmm. is to people, and success is measured differently by perception. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Me, mm -hmm. me having this place right now. Um, the one with like the I, piano I, in it. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm play it once the show is over. I'm gonna go over there and play it. <laughs> uh, and, but it's not. Yeah, it's just sunny and all that outside. All that is. It's, um, but uh, I forgot what I was about to say. Anyway. Well, I, I will say this. This is definitely a passionate uh, uh, topic. And, and it's one that, that people need to be having in, in their homes as they're raising their boys. Um, like Again, like, 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 we, like we talked about, maybe uh, the way we were brought up or our parents brought up, it's, it's, just, it's just not gonna work with, with, with today's boys. And, and it has to be a, a, a refocus. 
there. Where, where, where are, what are we teaching our boys? What are we teaching our boys? You, you know, know that, you that practice, when, when a man... Go ahead, Auntie. Go ahead, go ahead, Boom. You're the go man. Go ahead, Auntie. <laughs> that that practice in families when a man leaves the house either through death or divorce and the woman says to the young boy you're the man of the house now bad mm. practice it is putting too much pressure onto a boy to copy a role rather than to evolve into something so women wow. if you are uh if your man is gone don't you make that little boy the man of the house. And don't you make that little girl the man of the house. You need to recalibrate your house. But don't put that kind of pressure on a boy. It, it is intimidating. It causes, it's, he fears. It causes him to tense up and freeze up mm, well inside. But he can't let it show because he's the man of the house. And men don't show weakness. So, mm, Man, they catch a bad break today. That's for sure. What were you going to say, dude? That's, that's, why we, that's how we end up in this, all this major suicide rate and all that because they feel like they failed or they feel like they're useless or they feel like they're the yes. uh, You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's that. It's that pressure. It's that. I'm not living up to it. Um, it's right. an analogy. One of the analogies I, I, I tell people is the whole prom thing. They go to prom and they do the stretch limo and a helicopter coming down blah, 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 blah. I said, well, what are you going to do for their birthday? Like, so you got to, you got to keep tearing up with the things that you're giving them and they're not earning this stuff. We had to earn everything. I was a oh. straight A student in school. I was a straight A student oh. until my dad passed. Um, oh. And then I just didn't go. I, it wasn't that I was not smart enough to do it. I just didn't go after he passed because he was the school, 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 school person. Um, after he passed, again, not agreeing with school, I left. You know what I mean? And I made a choice. I made a choice to go to the library every day and not hang out on the corner, even though I didn't have friends that hung out on the corner. But I wasn't just not going to school or not bettering myself. I, I just wanted to be done with school. I just never agreed with it. So I wanted more. And so if I had a son or even with my daughters, I give you that knowledge. I give you the knowledge to do this and do that. Da, 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 da. I'm not, I'm not, not teaching that. But you, I'm telling you, when you see these people, I just be like, I shake my head like, if that little boy is going to run something in the future, like, are you kidding me right now? This, I feel like it's doomed. That's exactly how I be feeling when I see it. Little boys is crying. I'm not saying we can't cry, but I'm telling you, when I, no, you can't have that. They cry. What? It's a son and daughter. They told the son no. They told the daughter no. And the son is crying. Really? What are you crying for? What are you crying for? And and that's what that's what gives you that. Like, what is going on? Why? Why are you crying? Oh, and good it's, question. Oh, that's a good oh. question. And it's a good question to ask the child. What, you know, how do they say use your words, not your tears? What? You know, I think that's a, actually you a teaching say that moment. All the time, but like, what? What are you? You know, it's a teaching for? moment. Yeah, yeah. What's really? behind those tears? Because a lot of people cry when they're angry, and mm -hmm. so and they're frustrated. So tears doesn't mean uh, it, it's sometimes a very strong way of manipulating people. Mm -hmm. Clearly, there are some serious issues. Uh, going on in, in, in society well concerning the, the, this particular topic and, and it's something that we definitely have to address our boys our young men uh, have enough challenges out here uh, without this being, <laughs> without this yet being another one and so we got to just make sure i think um that our young men are, are getting the support that they need uh, uh out there uh, uh, right now folks i mean i don't think they're wimpy i think they're, they're just mm. dealing with different different challenges uh four times four times uh the suicide rate of women four times yeah that's Cl painful to hear oh painful. breaks my heart breaks mm. my heart and so we, we we i think we as a society just need to do what we can whatever we can to try to 
Bill and our boys. I asked, All right. Go ahead, I Bo. Asked, I'm sorry. Real, real fast. I asked yeah, one ahead. time, I said, are you raising your children to stay with you for the rest of their life? Or are you raising them to be out on their own at some point? You know what I mean? And many people can't answer that question. They can't. Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like you are you're not raising them to be out on their own. You're raising them to be dependent upon you. So why should they go to college? Why should they go to the military? Why should they go to the what you're raising them to be dependent upon you? So you say if you say not you in particular, but if you say go to college, they'll go because you said go. <laughs> But if you didn't say go, they're not going. If you didn't say go get a job, they're not going to get a job because you got it. <laughs> no, that's not no, 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 no. Get up. You're raising these kids to be on their own. That's what you're raising them for, not to stay with you, unless they have to stay with you. you, you know. Yeah, and uh, I wish I, I should have played the whole thing, but it was so long, like I said. And, and they brought up in the video the fact that, you know, back when, when our, in our world, when we were coming up, uh, there, there was always that thing that when you got 18, they were looking to throw you out the house. <laughs> well, what, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. My, my mom was no different, trust me. Um, but um, <laughs> in today's world, I think what we're seeing, and they brought it up again in, in, in the clip, and people, you can go watch that uh, clip. You can find it on YouTube. Um, uh, is that the boys are just needing a, a little more support before they're able to, to leave the house. Uh, in today's world for, for whatever reason i think it's just important to make sure that, that they're getting that four times four times uh the suicide rate of women clearly there's a problem there all right folks y'all know what time it is we got to start rounding things out because we also like to spend our day we have things to do and i'm sure you do too so we're gonna uh start rounding things out let's start it out like this boom what you got coming up family man oh man i got another week of just being able to do things around the house here. I I, am, I don't have no no work. But then after that, like I said, I'm back to the grind, making a do what it do from DC to B more to LA and back. I will be all over the place. So um I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm excited about getting things in order. <laughs> the hardest working DJ in the business. Oh Debbie, you stay busy too. What you got coming up? Well, uh, this week I'm, I need to clean my studio and what I call my studio is really a work table. And when I'm actively making something, it gets crazy. So I need to clean that up before I can go on to the next project. All right, well, we can't wait to see the, the next project. You always do uh, uh, things that make me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All your art gets me thinking and I really appreciate that about it. Thank you. Of course, of course. And folks, as you all know, our cousin, our son has his own clothing company, people. Um, so we want to go check him out. He's making varsity jackets right now. That's definitely the season for it. So if you need a varsity jacket made or if you want to check out his clothes, you can go check him out at tellermadeentertainment.bigcartel.com. And of course, yours truly, I like to stay busy too doing my own thing. You can go see what I got going on, of course, on therealshaheem.com or uh, of course you can go look for gift ideas on our website hazy trades uh, i'm sure you're going to find something uh that for that special someone in your life all right now that we're coming to the end of the show i think we're we're going to be uh getting into what people look for the best <laughs> Bear, bear with me, folks. Ain't no stopping sunshine. Ain't no stopping me. Ain't no stopping all the love that sets the people free. Well, I'd like to use my platform to say I don't like it that every holiday the men have all of the sports on all of the little major networks and I can't watch my shows. I think that shows a great gender disparity in favor of men. Too much sports on the holiday, around the holidays. So there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the last word for on deck. That's the last word. 
right. It was a very, very passionate show. We hope y'all enjoy it. We love doing it for you. Boom, I'm glad you're back at your desk. The show's just much better when, when you're able to contribute the way we want. Love I'm loving it. Back at your desk, of course. <laughs> People, we hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to seeing you back here for another episode of From the Shore to Be More. Enjoy your day, folks. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>